So NASA's at it again. They're going to get back to the moon. Not with people yet. With uh, a private robotic flight. So, um, yeah. This is from NASA themselves. So this is just going to be a straight shot. I'm going to read this article here. It's going to tell you what they're doing. Again, I don't know, speculation as to what's going on, why they're doing it, why the sudden interest, excuse me, in the moon. Seems everybody's interested in it. I have some theories, but we'll we'll, look, we'll go over the article there anyway. So NASA science heads the moon on first U.S. private robotic Artemis flight. Carrying NASA scientific instruments as part of its commercial lunar payload services initiative, Astro Robotics Peregrine Lander launched on United, United Launch Alliance's ULA Vulcan rocket at 2.18 a.m. Eastern from Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Say, say that a couple times fast. Peregrine uh, has about a 46-day journey to, to reach the lunar surface. I wonder why it's so slow, but anyways. Once on the moon, NASA instruments will study the lunar uh, exosphere, thermal properties of the lunar uh, regolith, hydrogen abundances in the soil at the landing site, and conduct radiation environment, environment monitoring. Five NASA science and research payloads aboard the lander will help the agency better understand planetary processes and evolution. Search for evidence of water and other resources. Support long-term sustainable human exploration. So, looks like um, you know. Again, I would think the only reason why they're going there is money, mining, looking for resources that are hard to find on Earth, easier to find on the Moon. That would that would kind of make sense as to why they're you know they're looking for hydrogen abundances in the soil and things like that, and they're trying to see about you know radiation. Obviously, that would that would affect any equipment they would have on on uh, the lunar surface. Any humans that were would you know exposure to that, how long they can they can be uh, uh, exposed to that, which you think would be information that they might already have had, um, you know, from the first landing. You know, if if you believe that happened, which obviously it did. Um, so yeah, the first CLPS launch has sent payloads on their way to the moon, a giant leap for humanity. It's prepared to return to the lunar surface for the first time in over half a century. Uh, you could have left out part of that statement there, the return to the lunar surface for the first time, uh, said NASA Administra Administrator Bill Nelson. These high-risk missions will not only conduct new science at the moon, but they, will be, they are supporting a growing commercial space economy while showing the strength of American technology and innovation. We have so much science to learn from CLPS missions that will help us better understand the evolution of our solar system and shape the human the future of human exploration for the Artemis generation. So here's the five things that it's going to kind of do. Laser refractory array. So a collection of approximately half inch retro reflectors, a mirror used for measuring distance mounted to the lander. Uh, so I guess that's the term of the lander's position. So, okay, cool. That would seem like that's something that it should have. Uh, ne neutron. Spectrometer system. The system will search for indicators of water near the lunar surface. Okay, so then linear energy transfer spectrometer. This this radiation sensor will collect information about the lunar radiation. And like I said, near infrared volatile spectrometer system. The system will measure uh, surface hydration and volatiles. It will also determine certain minerals using spect spectroscopy while mapping surface temperature and changes at the landing site. So obviously that's again for um, the systems they're going to put there, down there, humans being on the moon, that kind of thing. Uh, peregrine ion trap mass spectrometer. This instrument will study the thin layer of gases on the moon's surface called the lunar exosphere and any gases present after descent and landing and throughout the lunar day to understand the release and movement of volatiles. Okay. So they're obviously, it would seem that they're studying all this for mining purposes solely. I don't think, you know, I don't think we're at the point where they're going to be, um, Looking to colonize the moon, other than you know short-term colonization of like people that would be doing the mining. That would be my guess, anyway. Um, it would seem timely that they're going to try and beat some of these other uh, entities, companies going up there like SpaceX and and uh, Blue Horizon and stuff. So you know, it's going to be first up there. First up there, whoever gets a, a real you know stronghold up there is going to be the first one to really start making. Making bank up off the moon. So, 
We'll see how this goes.